Hello everybody, this is Dee and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Dee Plans and Budgets. Today, it is time for my weekly recap. I love my weekly recaps. I get to go through and see what I spent last week. Although, to be honest with you, I write these things down daily. When I come home, I write down what I spent uh, while I still have the receipt and everything right there so that I don't forget. I don't depend on the amount in my envelopes or just on the credit card to have me track what I spend. So I'm always pretty up and aware of it, but I do like to go through and look at it and then add it all up for the week and see how I did. We're going to do that today together as well as do my Monday savings challenges and the um, save for cruise. And then also today I'm going to insert a little bit about the importance uh, in planning retirement of having a, having a balanced portfolio. I'm not talking about investment wise. I'm talking about cash versus cash deferred assets. Let's start with my recap, right? Let me show you what I got. So I love Tracy and her little taco and her taco like covers up. Well, it always covers up how many times she went to Cheers, right? That's always the thing. But they had this at Hobby Lobby, and I really liked it. It's a little squishy Grinch, right? And there's actually a story that goes with me loving Grinch. It's not just about being anti-Christmas. <laughs> it is also, I sang with a chorus named Lionsgate Chorus. They were from Vancouver, BC, and they did a Grinch package one year um, for a contest that uh, is pretty much considered one of the best performance packages ever in Sweet Adelines. And so I was a part of that. I was very much a part of that. And so that is why Grinch also speaks to me, not just because I'm anti-Christmas. And then also it's very interesting because I am pretty Grinchy about Christmas, but everybody in my life who knows me knows that I am not a Grinch in real life, that I love to give and I love to give of my time and my resources and everything around me. So I now have a squishy Grinch and I'll just use it to cover up my total this week since there's nothing super surprising in there. But if I do have a big splurge in the future, I can cover it up and build suspense, right? Okay, so on Monday, woohoo, the thrilling, I went and got Diet Pepsi and yogurt, $19.95. I mean, that's disgusting. Right. If you really think about it, that was a 24 pack of Diet Pepsi, which is now twice as much as it used to be. And a few things of yogurt. Erg. On Tuesday, I had a no spin. Whoop, whoop. Didn't need anything. On Wednesday, I got some more of the friction erasable pins because those are working. I've accepted the lighter color of those pins. And so now they are working well for me when I'm doing my planning stuff both in my regular planning, my pre-planning, and then in my budgeting stuff, because I can erase if I need to, which means I'm not writing over as much white out, which I prefer. And so I got some more uh, colors of those, because that helps when I'm doing things to uh, color code things. And then I bought some toilet paper for $8.53, and then just other food that I needed for $46.40. On Thursday, I had enough spend. On Friday, I sent out two little packages, uh, one to um, someone who had sent me some budgeting things and the other one to someone who I've been pen paling with for quite a while. Uh, stationary fly stuff is what we uh, pen pal with and that would only cost me $3.18 this time because I didn't have really big envelopes. Saturday was my big spending day and I am still looking for planners for next year. And when I was in Hobby Lobby, they had one of their 18 month, which runs July of 2023 through December of 2024 on sale for $9.40. It's a vertical. I don't usually do a vertical, but I'm going to go ahead and try that for my daily planner this year. See if I like it. It was on sale. And verticals are really fun to decorate. And now that I'm keeping a YouTube planner as well, which really is where most of my plans are going on, all I really need on that weekly is like my grocery list and when I have appointments and stuff to write down. So I think I can make the vertical work this year. I bought a shadow box. My sister's making a gift for someone for me. Um, and so the shadow box was $25.81. I bought this little Grinch and a ruler. It was $6.15. And then I went to Michael's and they had actual Prismacolors on sale for um, $14.60. I haven't tried them a lot yet, but just my testing so far, they are amazing. 
but the Hobby Lobby knockoffs of the Prismacolors are just as good. Now these were on a very big sale. They're usually like $24 and they were $14, which is why I bought them and went ahead and tried them. Additionally, this is the landscape. And so it has all these colors that I do not have in my other sets of pencils because this was like the landscape color. So anyhow, I went ahead and bought that. That was my splurge. And so that day, my total was $55.96. So all together for the week, let's get my little calculator. I guess Grinchy didn't need to cover anything because I hadn't added it up yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was good, D. So all together for the week. Sunday was a no spend, by the way. Hey, girl. 144.82 for the week. I still have the electrician bill, but they still haven't been back out. But that's okay. The total this week was 144.82. Yay. Next, I am going to insert the little bit of information that I am posting on balancing your portfolio. And I'm going to put that in right here. All right, I'm cutting into today's video to talk a little bit about balancing your cash and cash deferred options, specifically if you retire early. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get into all the issues, but I will uh, cover definitely a couple of those today. So I had been made aware early on, well, in my 30s and 40s, from some of my clients that balancing or having you know a, a, a well-balanced portfolio is super important when you retire because you don't want to have a major purchase cause you to have to cash out retirement that puts you into a different bracket, meaning you have to pay a higher tax rate than what you had thought. And so it was really important to always balance like cash, Roths, etc., with your portfolio. Right now, I have an imbalance of retirement to cash, which cost me money every year. It costs me money in taxes and it costs me money in the amount of subsidy I get for my health insurance. It will also continue to cost me money as I start drawing Social Security because having to draw more retirement assets because those now count as income means that more of my Social Security is going to be taxable. So it is something that's very important to look at and think about when you're retired or thinking about retiring. Specifically, if you're thinking about retiring before the age of 65 without medical insurance. Now, again, not a financial advisor here. I'm not going to pretend to tell you what you need to do with your money. There are super qualified people out there that can do that for you, and they'll be more than happy to have your business. But if you're thinking of retiring before 65, one of the things that I would really recommend you also do is contact a reputable insurance agent and talk to them about Obamacare, healthcare.gov, etc., I was very surprised in my situation to find out that even though I had, you know, not, I say a large amount, but it's, it's, it's not huge, right? But I had, you know, a, a decent amount of savings, but I was still going to be able to qualify for a subsidy through Obamacare because Obamacare only counts your income. It does not count your assets. So this means that I only... My income is based on what I'm drawing out of my retirement, not if I take cash out as well. Now, another area that this is important is that if you had all of your assets in cash and you were living just off cash and your interest was not enough to meet the minimum requirement for Obamacare, then you're not going to qualify for Obamacare. Instead, they're going to say you need to go on to your state Medicaid program. Problem is, state Medicaid programs count your assets. I am so glad that I talked to someone very shortly after my divorce. So before you retire early, if you are thinking about that, before the age that you can get on Medicare, there's two things I highly suggest you do. You go talk to some kind of invest, you know, investment specialist and talk about how to invest or, or balance your portfolio cash to tax deferred. 
and let them help you through that process and advise you on the best way to do it. The other thing that I would do is contact a reputable insurance agent and talk to them about what your plans will be if you are going to need insurance and need it off of the marketplace. Because this is where my imbalance in cash is an issue. Now, I don't get all of my insurance subsidized because I have to take enough out of my retirement to live. And I am okay with that, actually, right? If the government says I have X amount of dollars that I can afford to pay for my insurance, given the income that I have, then I'm okay with that. I want to pay that. That's fair, right? But it does limit me if I needed to make a large expense and I had to cash out a large amount of retirement, I could lose my subsidy that year, which would be big, right? I could still purchase on the marketplace, but I wouldn't get any help with that subsidy. And I will be honest with you, without a subsidy, I absolutely could not afford my insurance. It would be out of my reach, right? So when I bought my house, a couple of years ago, I had to sell a van that I had. It wasn't a minivan, it was an actual RV. It was a class B RV. And it was actually a perfect time to sell it because of the situation that was going on. I actually sold it for what I paid for it, which is unheard of in the RV community. But I sold that to use the money to count for, or to put down on my house because if I would have taken that larger amount of cash and put that down in my house, it would have count or would have tied up cash assets and left me unable to make it to 65 and be able to supplement some of my, my income with cash. So this is just something that is super important that I want to warn you about and making sure that you think about this as you go into retirement and go get the help from people that you need. In my specific situation, when I divorced, I was not old enough to convert my items, for instance, my um, 401ks to a Roth or to just cash them out and pay the taxes. I was not old enough to do that without the penalty. And my ex-husband made a very good income, so it would have been a high tax bracket had I done that. Of course, that was pre-2020 when I, you know, mistakenly thought that taxes wouldn't be that much higher in six or seven years when I started to retire. But of course, we all know with all the debt and stuff that we're incurring, taxes are just going to have to continue to go up. And so there's a very good chance that I am going to have a very heavy tax burden. Now, there is an option I could do for this. I could go back to work for a year, find a job with insurance, and not have to get my Obamacare. And then during that year, I could convert a large amount of cash. And if something big were to happen, I may have to do that. At this point, I'm fine because I was aware of it starting in 2019. And so I have been very conscientious about it, doing things like selling that class B camper van instead of taking cash out for the down payment on my house. There are also options I could do. I just bought my van and I own it outright, my little minivan. But let's say something happened and I actually needed a car in my situation, it would be better off to finance it, believe it or not, because the amount of interest that it would, it would cost me would be less than the increase I would have to pay on my insurance and the taxes. So for every thousand I take out additionally, it cost me um, $100 in insurance and about $200 in taxes. So there's things I can do if I need to. I am super grateful that I have a new car that shouldn't be something I need. I, you know, my house, I put a large payment down on my house and so I can afford it. And there shouldn't be any other, you know, big expenses in my life that I would need that are going to, you know, put me into that situation 
But that's because I became aware of this early on and started really paying attention to it. And I am taking the absolute most that I can afford to take out of my retirement each year and still have an insurance premium that I can afford and still live the life that I want. So bottom line, if you're going to retire, especially if you're going to retire before 65, but at any time, go talk to your financial advisor specifically about balancing your cash to your tax deferred assets and go talk to an insurance agent if you are under 65 about Obamacare and what you can qualify for and how that all works. And I, I think they can even talk to you about Medicare if you need that, right? So those would be two things that I would tell you to really get a plan for and start planning for and making sure you are keeping that in mind before you decide to retire early and leave the job that supplies you with health insurance. All right, well, let's get back to the other video. Okay, budget babes, you are back. Let's get going on these savings challenges. In my box, as always, I pre-color in the box. I did get one A this week, but that's amazing. And so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have decided as I finish these up, with the exception of the D's and the L's, I am going to take these out and quit collecting those numbers. Collecting all the numbers is not something that I, I ever intended to do forever. I just wanted to see if I could get them. Some of these will be a long time before I finish out, and that's fine. They'll stay in the box until I finish them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 B-Bucks. If I was saving these for individual things, that would be fine, but I'm not. So as I finish them, I am going to just throw them in my casino money and, um, and go from there. So in the D's, I have two. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 20 D-Bucks. I'm going to keep collecting D-Bucks because, of course, I'm D. And then I am going to continue to collect L-Bucks for my granddaughter. So E, Virginia, it is done. Yay! Let's count it up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I am going to set these aside for now. I will get them all annotated and such, but I am going to take this on the upcoming cruise with me. Perfect small bills for extra tips. That is good. And then G is Chicago. I'm getting close to that done with these as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. The reason I'm going to stop collecting every bill is mostly just because it takes a lot of money out of my spending. So when I'm putting all these bills away, it takes money away from what I have to spend. And... I need the money I have, especially my walking around money. So H is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be quite a while until I complete those. I will try to complete all the letters, of course. I just won't keep repeating them. I did not get any I's this time, but got K's, Dallas, one, two, three. And I believe that was enough to finish me up. Let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And look, that's a Starbuck K-Buck. But I checked it, so no problem. And then I have this special K-Buck as well. And it is actually a um, $5. And it's a K-Buck. I don't think I'm just going to take that to my tips but I will do something with that. So that money is gone as well. And this divider is gone as well. Let's stick these two together. That would be less in my box and one L bucks. As I said, I will continue to collect these. And in here, I have a set of 25 already. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. My idea with these is just to keep collecting these for my granddaughter until she graduates. And then I'll give her a box of cash. 
I mean, who wouldn't want a box of cash, right? I think. I wonder. Like when she graduates, would that be the equivalent of giving someone a box of quarters now? I don't know. Whatever. I can convert it if I need to. In this binder right here, I'm going to put the last week in here because I've already done this for, you know, I think I messed up and put that video or I'm going to schedule that video for the 2nd of October when I'm gone, uh, which means I'll be skipping this when I do my next cash stuffing, I think. Either way, I'm going to finish this up today with the $11, and that will conclude September. I am almost done with this. This is being totally funded by my walking around money, which is money I don't count, I don't track. It's just fun money to spend. So when this is done and it all comes out, it will go right into free spending of some sort. It'll be money I can have I'll just probably stash it away. And then when I, you know, one day feel like I want to go buy some pens that I don't even need, I can do it because once in a while we need to splurge, right? And this is money that I've given myself every month to splurge and I have managed to resist it. And so in the future, I can do that. Let's count and see what we had for September. 10, 25, 27, 29, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, and 41 dollars in September. I had made these books actually to sell, but because I did these one with the vellum and some of the ink got smeared, I couldn't sell it. So I thought, oh, you know what? I'll just use it. But also just be a nice 12 envelope system, right? So it could go either way. All right, this one's done. Now, for the one we've all been waiting for. Woohoo! Let's save for a cruise. You may be saving with a cruise with me with this. And, um, and the trackers and such that I had sent out. And so if you are using this, you can use it any way you want to. The idea was you could just write in the boxes and color them in as you want. You might wanna just write the total amount that you saved. Either way, that is up to you. And the person that I heard from this week was Trina. And see, she said that she had rolled a four and a six. And so we're gonna do pages six and pages four. Now for the future, I think that's a really good way to do it. However, you need to roll some side, some court sort of 12-sided die or roll your die and add them together sometimes because there's 12 months. So if we just roll two dice all the time and we count the dice separately, there wouldn't be, we'd never get to the 12. So uh, I am going to do, like I said, since Trina did this, I am going to do the four and the two, I'm going to pick numbers on the four and the two. And then I am also going to add those together for six and see if we can make 10 equal that way. And just a second, I'll be right back. I'm going to get a piece of scratch paper. All right, I'm back. I got a piece of scratch paper and then I also grabbed some pins. So I'll have an assortment. Now, one thing, if you are wanting to save more or less, you can do that. You can double this amount. You can half the amount. You can just play along with me every month, but just put 50 bucks in each box if you want to. It doesn't matter, right? I'm going to do $10. $10, if we did this every week, would be 520 So it's going to take us about a year and a half, two years to save completely for a cruise. And if this is your first cruise, actually two years is pretty good. It gives you lots of time to anticipate and investigate and learn about cruising before you actually go. So I'm going to write these down as I go along. So on page four, these are all little. Let's do a dollar twenty. And then on this page also, let's do a dollar eight. We'll have a little little diagonal go in here. Okay, now we go to page six, no, two and four. I'm sorry, we go to page two. That would be February. And let's do 59 and 58, I guess. These are all in numbers of the days of the year. So of course the lower months are really low. Okay, and then let's, six would be June. 
Let's do 181 and 180. And then after this, I'll add it all up and see what it comes out to and see what else we want to do. And Trina did not have a preference on color. She's the only one that answered this week. So that was fine. You don't have to roll a dice for this. You can also just pick a number, right? So, you know, pretty much any number from 0 to 365 is on here. And if you take, or I'm sorry, let me see, 0 to, yeah, 365 um, is on here. And so you can pick any of those numbers. If it's already taken, I will just pick one close to it. So we're going to start with $10. And then we did $1.20 and $1.08 and $59 and $58, $181 and $180. That leaves $2.94. Let me do that again just to make sure. $2.94. Okay, let's see if $2.94 is free. It is perfect. Let's color 294 in. Okay, so if you're saving with me today and you want to do all the separate boxes, your numbers would be 120, 108, 59, 58, 181, 180, and 294, and that will equal $10. Yay! If this is your first week saving, you are officially $10 closer to a cruise today than you were yesterday. $50, $70, and $80. That's what I have because I started this before you, and you are more than welcome to catch up if you would like. I am going to take my tracker and mark it for today. You can see I put my dashboard in here as well, and now I saved $10 today. Right now, $10 is all I am doing in here because of also still doing the other book and the Bucks box and all that kind of thing. But after the first of the year, I might be able to bump this up a little bit. Again, you won't need to unless you want to. All right, this concludes this challenge, and this does come from All Things Kimberly. She also avail has this available now in a printable if you would like. You do not have to have this. That is why I made you all these things to play along with me. Remember, if you're marking off a bunch of these boxes, you're going to need multiple copies of this. You could even shrink it down. Whatever you want to do, it's all up to you. I will again put this link in the description box below so that you can play along if you would like to. I hope that this video finds you as good as you can get on a Monday, right? And have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll be back Thursday with some savings challenges. Bye.